I'm Frank Buckholz. I'm the North Langley Community Director for the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce. As we've done in past elections, the Greater Langley Chamber is uh, interviewing candidates for office via video. And we have a federal election underway, two local ridings, and with me is Alex Joel. Alex is the Libertarian candidate for Langley Alderman. Welcome, Alex. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you decided to run in this federal election. Well, uh, some people might start to recognize my face or my name. Uh, I have run politically in the past. Uh, I really see it as a calling to be an option for other people on the ballot. Uh, not everyone's satisfied with the status quo or they're looking for something else that's going to get them out to the polls on election day. So even though I don't have a huge political background, uh, I, I do appreciate the chance to come and uh, represent Langley Alder Grove. And uh, as a libertarian, I really see a real, real niche for trying to appeal to people that otherwise uh, don't see an option with, uh, you know, the Borg, you know, the blue, orange, red, green uh, options that are currently available. Okay, um, we've prepared uh, some questions on issues that our members are interested in and of interest to the larger community. Our first one is on small business and taxation. And we represent a lot of small businesses, and a lot of them have a lot of fairly deep concerns about whether their businesses can survive because of the taxation environment. And, uh, you know, sort of a constant need, it seems, of governments to ask for more. Uh, where do you stand on small business taxation? Well, absolutely, it is a crisis that's going on in the way that they're, they've been attacked both through provincial and federal legislation. Uh, one of the things that I just read was uh, there was going to be, uh, uh, Jagmeet Singh suggested bringing in a federal minimum wage. And uh, minimum wage is one way that businesses uh, are uh, pigeonholed into certain, certain price points uh, that they have to meet and different regulations. Uh, we definitely look at taxation. The Libertarian Party of Canada would like to see uh, a flat tax brought in, bring it down to 15%, uh, and then get rid of all the different deductions that are available except for uh, our party platform includes one for students, disabilities, seniors, and child, child care. And after that, we and bringing up the personal exemption. So we feel that bringing up the families in this country, bringing up personal uh, tax freedom is going to de directly help business. Uh, and to an extension of that, definitely uh, when businesses are forced to jump through hoops, uh, and, and have certain costs that they're uh, increasing their overhead. Uh, we definitely feel that there's a way that we can help them help everyone else. Okay. Um, a big issue in our area, both Langley and Metro Vancouver, is housing. And uh, housing has become very unaffordable for many younger families in particular and younger people, but it's also affecting older people in many cases. And the federal government has brought in a national housing strategy to try and increase the number of social housing and lower cost rental units. And they've also brought in a fairly modest program which may help some people in our area to take equity for first time buyers. Um, what does the Libertarian uh, Party, what would you do in terms of making housing more affordable? Well, it's just economics 101. As soon as you add more funds into the market, it's going to add more purchasing power. It's going to start driving up the price. So the federal government, in trying to help the situation, give first-time home buyers more, more uh, purchasing power, what they're actually doing is uh, it's counterproductive. It's going to drive up the price of housing further. Uh, we would definitely repeal that. Uh, part, of, part of that new, uh, new offer that they've made, it's federal government is now in the speculation industry in that when you pay back, you do pay back a percentage of whatever uh, equity you've, ta you've taken out of the, the sale. So when it comes down to it, the federal government has no role in that in our opinion. And we would, the best way that we can help with the housing strategy is to get out of people's way. It's to properly let the industry regulate itself uh, and drill it down to provincial and you know, municipal level and just uh, get rid of housing, zoning issues, regulations, uh, really drill down uh, uh, the building code increases that have come through nationally. Uh, they're just adding cost to the homes that we have and that is part of the crisis. So the federal government's role should be to get out of the way 
let the municipalities and the provinces take care of it. Okay, and then the uh, third question we have is on transportation. Uh, SkyTrain uh, is proposed to come to Langley City. The Mayor's Council and TransLink have basically approved that plan, but there's no funding for it to go past Fleetwood. <clears throat> and the current project, which will go from King George to Fleetwood, is a lot of money for that is coming from the federal government. Do you see a role for the federal government in providing funding for that extension to Langley City, and how soon? Should that be built? Uh, there are a lot of people on both sides of this fence. Personally, I felt from day one that SkyTrain was not the option. Uh, mostly because of the huge cost, the huge burden, uh, the ridership will just never pay for it. So we'd be basically subsidizing somebody's pet project. Uh, if you're talking about actually getting people from point A to point B, there are many more efficient ways. LRT wasn't the answer, and I'm glad to see that that's been scrapped. But we definitely need to see an improvement in our bus service, and I think that if they wanted to wisely invest, you know, 1.6 billion dollars, we would have we could see an increase in uh, the B line bus routes, uh, and more community service routes, and at the same time upgrade the fleet that currently exists to be more energy efficient, if not running on some sort of alternative energy, at least uh, be more efficient in uh, burning fossil fuels. So definitely there could have been a better use of $1.6 billion. And another transportation issue that's of concern to the Chamber and its members is the Highway 1, and especially mm -hmm. the congestion that's experienced on a regular basis between Langley and Abbotsford. Do um, you see any role for the federal government assisting with that project? No, highway number one, obviously being a federal federal highway, uh, there, there's always going to be a role uh, downloading the cost to the provinces and and such and the, and the regional governments is probably not something that they're able to stomach right now. But one of the things that we need to keep in mind is all these different uh, excise taxes, uh, gas taxes that are currently being uh, forced down people's throats every time they go to the pump and I feel a lot of people are would even be okay with that if they felt they were good getting a good return on their investment so as long as we still are still in an automobile dependent economy there needs to be uh, increased freedom of mobility and right now you're absolutely right there's a big choke point there in Alder Grove uh, and then further east down in Abbotsford uh, so the federal government's role as a libertarian party perspective would be to eliminate those gas taxes and so they give people more options uh, to do what they want or vice versa better invest them in infrastructure so that we could actually get uh, people moving to their jobs and to their homes quicker. Okay, final question, uh, what is your position on the Trans Mountain uh, 20 project? Uh, uh, definitely getting, uh, getting the oil to people's homes, you know, getting it, whether it be uh, for, to the refineries and or to the docks. Uh, what we need to do it as efficiently as possible, uh, as cost effect, uh, effective, but we also have to do it as safe as possible. And it's, it's quite well known that pipelines are the safest way to carry it, as opposed to bringing it by rail, uh, which uh, could definitely cause, uh, cause issues along our beautiful shorelines we have here in British Columbia. So where I stand is that we definitely do need to make our pipeline system more efficient and if Kingdom Morgan wants to build it, so be it. My issue is, is currently the legislation that exists, they're only forced to have a $1 billion contingency fee in case of a spill, in case of an environmental catastrophe. And our government would definitely hold anyone accountable to the last dollar, forcing them to liquidate everything that they had. Because when it comes down to it, uh, you can't put a price on the clean environment that we have. Uh, everyone has a right to clean air. Uh, we, you know, we believe in property rights. You own everything on your land, in, above and below. So, if anyone's polluting against that, I should have the right judicially to go after them. Okay. So, collectively, uh, as a government, what we would do is make sure that they were legally held accountable for any any uh, catastrophes that may or may or may not occur. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much.